Today we're talking about wild food foraging. I'm out in the woods. I could hear wild animals. Actually, those are the neighbors. But this area right here, there's a whole bunch of pathways that go through the woods. And there's a bunch of scrubby oaks and there's sparkle berries and there's some wild blueberries and there's Yaupon holly and there's smilax and other bits and pieces that, of stuff that grows in terrible sandy acid soil. But we discovered something this fall that is one of my absolute favorite wild edibles that I first discovered when I lived in North Florida. But it turns out there are lots of them here too. And that is a mushroom, a wild mushroom, which I know, I know what you're thinking. Organ failure. No, you're not gonna get organ failure from these. But don't trust me. I'm just this guy on the internet. Anyhow, that aside, we found chanterelles. And I am going to pick some. For some reason, they're here, and I'm here, and that means I'm supposed to eat them. They're hiding. Now, for those of you out in Oregon and Washington, you may have found chanterelles before and said, hey, our chanterelles are much bigger. Well, yes, but our taxes are lower. Some of these guys are kind of small, but it's gonna be dry for a while, which means they're probably not gonna get much bigger. Now, it's nice to bring a little knife with you instead of just picking them and throwing them in like this. Take the little dirt ends off and then you have less to clean later. So you just nip the ends off of your your little mushrooms. They're so itty bitty. But they're full of flavor. This area of woods is just totally full of them. Make sure you get my tube saw. and my fashionable thrift store shorts. So this whole area of woods, they, they seem to like kind of open woods where there are oaks. And this is a mushroom that lives on the roots of specific species. In this case, it's pretty much oaks. And so if you find them in a spot, the, the mycelium, the actual mushroom itself, is gonna live beneath the ground all the time. So if you find them there once, you're going to find them there again when the conditions are right. And we have had unseasonably cool and rainy weather. And that combination has made them flush out into bloom. I think I can see some more over here. But because they're blooming right now, that's, that's just when you grab them. You grab them when they bloom. Because you would never know that these things even existed, except when the weather hits a certain thing and then pop, they're all over the place. But then in a week, you won't find a single one. There's one back in there, but I don't really feel like crawling through that. That's a little bit too much work. We'll find some more. You find any back there, sweetie? Wandering mushrooms. See, they're bright yellow. Kind of a bright yellow orange, which makes them easy to spot. Probably not as easy to spot on camera as they are with your eyes. And another thing, this is not a particularly good example, but you could tell it's a chanterelle because these aren't really gills. They're sort of a gill structure, but they don't crush like regular gills. See, they're just sort of rubbery. And another thing about chanterelles is you can peel them into pieces like this really easily. There are some things you can mix them up with, but I have not mixed them up with anything yet. The rubbery gill structure and the way they tear is pretty much dead giveaway that that is a chanterelle. See, this is an older one. Still edible, it's getting a little crispy around the edges. Notice that the gills don't crush. Can't just crush them in. It's, it's actually got some heft to it. It's got some solid, kind of a rubbery texture. Mm -hmm.
Uh, one, two, three, and four. I got the gourmet like you can't afford. I said, come to dinner, cause I'm breaking the bell. Serving up the pile of a chef to rest. From the woods to my pan, frying them up, cause I'm the man. Actually, my woman is frying, cause I'm the super manly guy in this house. Putting mushrooms in my mouth with eggs and coffee and sausage. Uh, Kaneka, I betcha. You ain't eating breakfast like this. Get your auntie right, cause if you miss, you die like a dog that's eating cane toads like a possum that got mashed flat in the road. Yo, screw up your fungi, yeah, that'll ail ya. MC Shroom represent with the orchid bell, you're gonna die. Gonna die. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. Uh. They're all over through the woods in here. We're kind of coming to the tail end of this flush of them, I think, because we picked a couple of gallons over the last few days in various spots around the property. And these are starting to get a little older. They don't look quite so happy as they did a few days ago. But they, they seem to prefer like somewhat open areas. They tend to show up on the edges of paths and where there's a little bit of sunlight and always around trees. You're not going to find these things like out in the middle of a field. If there aren't any roots for them to, to attach to, you're not going to find them. They actually are a, they have a kind of a symbiotic thing going on with certain plant species. And if those species aren't there, the chanterelles aren't either, which means if you think you have chanterelles in your yard and they're growing in a specific area and you go, okay, I'm gonna find out what they are. And you look it up and you check and you find out, yes, those are definitely chanterelles. If you go and you clear the trees out of that area, the chanterelles will disappear. You'll lose your chanterelle patch. So it's another thing to think about when you're clearing land is, are there any useful mushroom associations with these trees that I'm cutting down? Not necessarily are the trees edible, because if they were edible trees, that would be great. You know, you got persimmons or some wild hickories or something cool like that. But if it's a tree that you think, wow, it's kind of a trashy tree, it's not even edible, like a lot of these scrubby oaks, but it was growing chanterelles around the base, hey, it's like a chanterelle tree. You don't want to get rid of it. So it's a good idea to kind of observe your property and figure out, you know, is there something here like a gourmet mushroom? Thanks for joining me. Now, before you go out mushroom foraging and end up with something terrible happening to you or or seeing things that you shouldn't be seeing Do your research. I will put a link below. I have been collecting mushroom foraging books for quite a while. I'll put a link below to my favorite mushroom foraging books. I made a list on my blog some time ago and you can check those out. And be careful out there. It's not as safe as gardening, but man alive, if you start to learn which things are edible and you can get some really good wild chanterelles, it's a lot of fun. So catch you next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. I buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again On a fruit salad spoon